spirituality is dimensionless dimension. Some of my books are titled Beyond the Known. In the past few days, there had been a few questions that had been bothering the seekers. I will respond to those. A spirituality is a dimension beyond the known. We have known certain things. We have known Hinduism. We have known Islam. We have known Christianity. We have known Judaism. We have known other things. Because all these are known dimensions. What is beyond Hinduism? What is beyond Islam? What is beyond Christianity? What is beyond Judaism? We cannot understand. Your mind is Hindu. Is your brain Hindu? That the air that you inhale or exhale is the water that you drink is Hindu or Muslim or Christian? Is electricity that you use Hindu, Muslim or Christian? But we have condensed spirituality within the narrow boundaries. And as long as you condense it within the narrow boundaries, it is no more spirituality. You will remain stifled. You will never be able to soar in the vast sky like a bird. There are masters who have made Hinduism, who have made spirituality, given spirituality a complete Islamic structure, complete Hindu flavor, complete Christian flavor. They follow the rituals of the so-called religion in a very methodological way, but that cannot help an individual to go beyond. My great-grandfather Lala Ji Razila Talaulu, his emphasis was, is one of the most important statement is, Be Tasubi Sadaqat Rijal. Tasub means narrowness and Be Tasubi means beyond narrow boundary. Be Tasubi means beyond a certain level, there are watertight compartments, division. When higher you go or deeper you go, those boundaries begin to disappear naturally. And consciously, in your process of growth, you have to remove these boundaries. You study the science discipline. In science, we have a major category when you go to a primary school there is a subject called science. Then this subject science gets divided into physics and chemistry. Then physics is further divided into many things. And as you go up to the university level, when you are doing your masters, this division remains astrophysics, optics, magnetism, then chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, biochemistry, and all these things remain. The statistics is a different branch. Mathematics, the modern mathematics, the Pythagoras theorem, all these things. But suppose you have chosen a career to be a primary school teacher or a university teacher. Primary school teacher, you will be teaching these subjects in a watertight compartment. But when you go to the university, you will have to go to a specific branch. Maybe you are an expert in optics or magnetism or sound. These are all aspects of physics. But if you choose to go in outer space, do you think you can confine only to the astrophysics or you can confine to the physics and not study the chemistry, not to study the mathematics, not to study the statistics and other disciplines. You have to incorporate psychology and many other disciplines. This is an interdisciplinary approach when you enter into outer space. You have to cross over the magnetic force of the earth in order to enter into another space. The spirituality is like crossing over from one magnetic force. Your magnetic force is created by the physical body, then emotional body, then etheric body. In order to 
if you remain on the ground level you are at the physical level you are identified if by your looks you are identified male female indian american african or whatever the nomination there will be but nobody knows what is there inside your mind then you have to cross that boundary in order to reach to the other the magnetic force of that body to enter into another and then you have to reach to the dimension which is a dimensionless dimension you enter a house you are renting a house bought an apartment the apartment that you bought is it a hindu apartment or a christian apartment or a muslim apartment or a jewish apartment the apartment is in it cannot be identified when you enter this is this belongs to a particular religion or belief religious belief then you start decorating the house according to your own life you make it a hindu house with hindu idol hindu way of living you can do it as a islamic house what is the difference between a church a temple or most what identify it is the inner structure that you do the deco that identifies it to be a mosque or a church or a temple each one of these structure must have an arch like the structure on top which is inside a hollow space in the ceiling that hollow space was created to generate echo when a word is spoken it comes back to you as an echo this is known as biofi technique when you go to taj mahal in a particular place you speak a word and it comes back to you as an echo now if all the statues in the temple are taken off and with a little modification that temple can become a church instead of having the hindu idols you can have a meal or something else hindus are identified by a particular color muslims are identified by another color you change the color and within with a slight modification the structure changes it becomes an altogether different structure in the same way just as when we come to a house we paint different rooms for different purposes and also for different function we do the deco according to its utility kitchen is decorated differently the living room the bedrooms bedroom of the children and the bedroom of the children what is the core element in the each room it is the space a space within the room in the beginning there was one space then you decided to build a structure on it and you divided the space into room bedroom space bedroom 1 bedroom 2 bedroom 3 guest room living room laundry washroom area kitchen area dining area entertainment area but the inner space remains the same and we do things in a specific way then whatever you can do in your bedroom you can do in the living room. and what you do in your toilet area restroom area you do not do in other places as far as the functionality is concerned this is okay when you have to go beyond these spaces this we have to understand that in the beginning there was one space and for various reasons this space was subdivided your soul your being your room whatever you call in different disciplines we call it by different names we have to understand this difference the first there was one space for various functionalities for continuation of life this space was divided but we remain divided over the space this is my space the children fight among one another saying that this space is mine that space is yours but the same nature continues even when we grow we forget 
that our soul is beyond all conditionality or religion. When it is expressed at the physical level, we have physical differences, male, female, difference of color, difference of heights and bodily structures. When we go a level beyond that, there is difference of opinions, difference of religious beliefs. So when you go into a Hindu way, yes, it could be a way if that particular way does not become an obstruction for you. We are born innocent, you are born without any religious belief, but when you are born in a Hindu family, you are brought up as a Hindu, as a Christian, as a Muslim. There is a particular age prescribed for getting a driver's permit. There is a particular age prescribed for getting to work. We do not give a driving permit as soon as a child is born. We do not give the child a right to vote as soon as the child is born. But we do not ask the children anything, but we impose our religious beliefs on them. This is wrong. Not only wrong, but we can use an extreme word for it. What is important, a child should be exposed to all and then let the child on his own decide which naturally comes to him. That kind of freedom we do not have when it comes to religious belief, but it spiritually offers you that freedom. And Lala Ji Razila Tala Unu Ram Chandra, his main emphasis was, unless you can cross the boundaries of narrowness, you cannot enter the spiritual dimension. You are born in a Muslim family, Hindu family, but you have a natural inclination towards Lausi, towards Saraha, towards Bodhi Dharma, towards Buddha. Your religious beliefs obstruct you from that. What is that an individual supposed to do in that situation? The person has a family, the wife or husband brought up in a particular religious belief, conflict comes in. We have to resolve this conflict on our own. The truth is you are born in a Muslim family, but you are not born in a Muslim born a Muslim or a Hindu, you are born as a human being. Jalaluddin Rumi has said somewhere, I am not a Buddhist, I am not a Hindu, I am not a Christian, I am beyond all, because I am who? I am that space which cannot be encompassed in anything. How to create a balance between this understanding that you have that I am so, I am beyond all this, but I have to live within the narrowness. You are the owner of the house. You are the landlord. Landlord has a right to enter or visit any apartment, any room, any house. Whereas the owner of the next apartment cannot enter your apartment without your permission or without your invitation. But you can, when there arises a problem, a bulb is to be changed or there is any malfunctioning, you have a right to enter into any room, any apartment, because all apartments belong to you. That control you have, nobody else has. And that comes only when you realize that you are in a dimension beyond the dimension. You are not Hindu, nor Muslim, nor Christian. One day, try to think, even for a one minute, that you are neither Hindu, nor Muslim, nor Christian, nor Buddhist. You see that you have gotten a freedom. You can soar into the sky. Yes, that does not mean I do not have a respect. I am the water. Jesus says very clearly, he does not say I am Christian and Jesus was not Christian because the word Christianity does not exist during the time of Jesus. The word Islam did not exist during the time of Muhammad. It is the people who carry on the business afterwards they make it a Hindu, Muslim or Christian. Jesus says, I am the saltishness. Saltishness is the quality that can bring the flavors to any food wherever it is added. Jesus is that flavor wherever it is added, it gives a new taste, a new something new. I am the water that can acquire any shape. You have to be the water that can acquire any shape. When a water becomes a cup of 
what or a bucket of water is there any conflict between the two no water is water it is formless shapeless the moment you realize but you are thinking of this at the level of the physical at the level of the mind at the level of within the narrow boundaries you are trying to be boundaryless no you have to go beyond the boundaries to be boundaryless you have to come out of the house to be in the open sky under the roof under the vast canopy vast sky only then you can feel the sunlight the moonlight the breeze and every now i had explained to you in the la one of the sessions last week truth is that which works truth is not hinduism is not truth christianity is not truth it is in a way relative truth but truth when it comes to you truth is that which works for i had given you the example a story a house was on the fire a house was on the fire and father had gone to the market to fetch something the neighbors has gathered almost half of the house was burned children were one of the rooms unaware of the fire they were playing the father comes home he saw the house on fire the neighbor said do something otherwise your children will perish now what did the father do he know how the children will come out of the room he went close to their room so that close to the room where they were stranded and he became he went as close as possible so that he could be audible he said children i have brought the toys that you wanted and the sweets that you want come out quickly and get your toys as soon as these words reached the children they run out of the room when they run out of the room the father carried them into an open safe space they asked where is my toys and the sweets that you told us about he said sons we lied to you i did not bring any toys or sweets today the children said then why did you disturb us because we were playing comfortably father said the house was on fire you would have perished i lied to you is this a lie true is that which moves this lie would to save the children the life of the children it is not a lie it is true true is that which moves you are a man of family you have a wife who have a particular belief system you have actually come out of the narrow boundaries you are seeing a horizon beyond the narrowness you have children what to do with that situation you act like that father do not have any guilt free because guilt comes to you because of your mind otherwise there is no guilt if you are living christians use a cross around their neck muslims use the islamic symbol of moon and star hindus use their symbol it happened when vivekananda was speaking after his famous talk in the parliament of religions the people keep on saying why do hindus worship idols why why it is a worship so keep on saying that that the idol worship is not good vivekanand remained silent in the front line there were clergies pastor sitting down he went to one of them and held on to his cross and he said mr clergy what is this you are worshiping cross and whenever you have to do anything or a situation comes you make a, a cross like gesture hindus circumvallate in the temple they go and put on a particular kind of a garb they circumvallate around their script sculptures their statues in a clockwise manner when muslims go to hajj in mecca what they do they circumvallate they shave their head they have white garb around them and they circumvallate seven times but in a anti clock way circumvallating is seen this is a ritual hindus do putting on a saffron garb head shape muslims use wearing a white garb head shape in an anti clock direction hindus do in a clockwise direction hindus may be chanting a particular mantra but they are told 
Muslims do in a particular way. What is the difference? Difference is at the level of the mind. I have crossed all bounds. I am not a Hindu, nor a Muslim, nor a Christian. I do not teach you a Hindu spirituality or Christian spirituality or a Buddhist spirituality. I am a physician. To me, your health is more important and that is what is supposed to be to you as well. In order to restore your health, if I have to give you an injection of a distilled water, I will give. If I have to give you a herbal medicine, I will do that. Depending on the seriousness of your sickness, I have to devise a ways and means to prescribe you something so that you can be healthy. And to be healthy is to be holy. To be holy is to be spiritual. You can use the device of that father. You remember the children love both their parents. When there is a divorce case, we fight over the children and then if the children go in the custody of the mother, mother does not allow the children to meet their father. Father does not allow the children to meet their mother. They remain completely antagonist. There is a particular serial on this aspect on one of the national channels of India. The father and the mother separated. The father kidnapped his five-year-old son because the custody case was going on in the court, father kidnapped his son and he told him that he has to say in the court what he wants him to say, otherwise he will die. he will harm his mother. He loved his mother dear and he burned the hand of the child to prove in the court that mother is careless and mother is the one who burned the child. Child was afraid. When he comes to the court, and in the testimony it was said that father said it is the mother who did that. The mother ran to the witness box, held up to the child, looking at his burnt hand, took him in her lap and told him, hugging him, that you do not need to be afraid. Say the truth what it is who burned. The child gathered courage. And then he mentioned it is the father who burned, burned him. Do we want this kind of upbringing for our children? There is a disturbance between you and your spouse. But the children cannot be divided over this. They love both parents. All those parents, all those people whose parents have separated, you ask them to look into their deep within which of the parents they love more father. Because of certain circumstances, they are not allowed to meet the other. But when they go on their own, they see a different image. Many people have come to me and they have a similar problem. I told them to look into. First, in order to overcome the obstacles, the impediments that comes within your married life, there may be a disturbance. Do you have a disturbance when you go to a restaurant together and you order different dishes? You order a chicken dish, someone else order a vegetarian dish, third one orders fish. Is there any conflict in that? Because we understand it very much, the liking and the taste of everyone is different. Maybe when it comes to the religious thing, it is a different, it is a watertight compartment. If the other does not understand, but you do, and if you do, you can create a situation. You can create an accommodation in that. I am a vegetarian. I do not eat meat dishes and I do not cook meat dishes either. But what can I do? My children eat. My son and wife eats fish. My daughter eats fish and other things as well. During my holiday, when I reached by my daughter, I was picked up. She came and opened the apartment and she told me, Daddy, in the fridge, there is chicken and fish marinated. I marinated, cut it into big pieces and I marinated it. This evening we have guests coming. You cook 
chicken in this particular way because my way is to give joy my presence should give joy to the people i don't eat meat i don't cook she said i know that you don't touch meat you don't wash or anything but you can cook so she told me to cook in a particular style i cooked it next day the same thing third day it was saturday she said today we have 10 people invited over christmas dinner one of the person is muslim she does not eat anything other than halal so we went and we bought halal meat but there were two portions of lamb one was halal and the other was not i have to cook that um, lamb in two different ways she wanted me to cook chicken in a particular style fish in a different style lamb in a different style then there has to be something vegetarian cooked so i have to make a chicken biryani a vegetable biryani a thing like a chickpeas then she wanted fish as an appetizer so how to cook fish as an appetizer some vegetarian appetizer some non vegetarian appetizer so i told her that we will use the salmon fish and when you marinate fish with lime and salt you cannot marinate it for more than 15 minutes as soon as you add lime and salt fish starts cooking its color begins to change so i use five spices roll over the pieces into that and grill and fish cannot be grilled for more than 1 minute on either side the purpose behind this is i am doing it out of joy for different people if you cannot live your life out of joy you do not need to be called call you as a spiritual you can use you can remember truth is that which works when i close my eyes and two people are sitting down in a zikrullah and we are doing zikr khafi instead of zikr zehar zikr zehar is loudly zikr khafi means silent if i am saying om namah shivaya or alhamdulillah subhanallah or bismillah ir rahman ir rahim nobody knows both are the name of god it is the way what appeals to you and that today it appeals to me to eat this particular type of paneer or this particular style of chicken does it make a difference that you have to eat tandoori chicken not the chicken tikka masala you are doing to sesh you are eating to satiate you you are doing zikr to invoke your heart center so that it is open and when heart center is open it is ready to connect you to that space which we call alam e ghayb mirza ghalib in one of his composition he says aate hain ghayb se mazami khayalon mein ghayb means that realm which is beyond the known which is what the hindus call it my or what science call it as cyber space nobody has seen cyber space but we have seen it and you can see the effects whatever is contained in the cyber space only if you have the devices that can connect you to the cyber space if you do not have a internet facility if you do not have a internet facility you cannot connect to the cyber space if you do not have your laptop or device that can connect establish a connection with the cyber space through your internet connection you will not be connected to that your heart the kal is that device that connects you to that almega first of all that energy which is you can call it a fan or a light or any need it comes through you it becomes a thought process into you then thought process becomes out of that comes your action at different level but it is the same energy that moves aate hain ghayab se mazami khayal everything comes from that alam e ghayab from that realm beyond the known first it descends to the level of thought then from the level of thought which when it interacts with the organs of action and perception 
it becomes your action. It is your understanding that becomes your action. And understanding is not a Hindu, Muslim or Christian. It is beyond all that known boundary. Learn the art of fusion. Learn the art of going beyond the narrow boundary. The master chefs are those who go beyond the narrow boundary, who create new dishes by combining this spice to that, this cooking method to that, because they have a complete understanding of the cooking methods, how to blend different spices, how to di blend different cooking devices, and they create something which is beyond imagining. This is the realm of spirituality. Whether you enter into the dimension of cooking or of painting, anything where creativity is in, that becomes important. You can cook chicken in a totally a different style. You can cook chicken filled with Italian spices, cheese, mix vegetables, roll it, steam it, cut it into small portions, and then sear it or roll it in oats or something and create something totally different you have known only to eat chicken in a particular way. If you are a master chef, you can do it. Learn to be the master in your field, be it whatever be your interest in spirituality, be a master to fuse in different things. When you sit down in meditation, who knows that you are meditating on your breath? In Islamic tradition, breath is also considered to be important as far as the meditation is concerned. When you keep on watching your breath, something begins to get silent in you. If you are plagued with intense passion, how to go beyond that? One way is that of indulgence, the other way is that of introspection. Each one of you, when you are on the verge of separation from your spouse for whatever reasons, introspect, pause for it. There would be certain moments in each relation which are the moments of extreme bliss. In everybody's life, in order to go beyond sex, each one of you has to really to look into your love life or sex life. In each moment, each relation, there would have been one, two, three moments which were of extreme bliss. The way that your spouse looked at you first time, or first time you made love, or you asked to make love and she gave a gesture. You have to remember which is important to you. And the moment you remember that, you start meditating on it. The more you meditate on those moments, you will find a different kind of satiation in you. Satiation that cannot come by indulgence in the sex. A satiation which is beyond imagination. You are reliving those moments. Whether the other understand that or not, you understand it. And then you start living your life out of that understanding. Then your insatiable quest for sex, insatiable quest for anger. Why does anger come in an individual? Comes when you want to get something and it is not happening. You want to make love but it is happening. The wife is watching, your spouse is watching a show and she wants to watch that show first or the children are around or somebody else is around. Anger comes in you because of that unfulfilled desire. What to do then? Anger is something that comes at the moment, now or never. If you can postpone your anger for a minute, for a second, you can never be angry. If you decide that when anger is coming into you, that you will get angry after five minutes. Let me do five times deep breath, inhale and exhale or do zikrullah, or chant a particular mantra, then get angry. You are not controlling it. You are trying to understand its nature. Its nature is anger is on this part of the moment. It cannot be shifted to next moment. And then you have to understand that a similar situation comes. 
come to you when you are interested in doing something which is very important to you and your spouse want to make love but you are you have no interest in that at that particular moment. But you can act then out of your understanding. Any situation can be sorted out if you have intelligence. Intelligence is at the level of the mind when it when that energy, when that light interacts at the level of the mind, it becomes your intelligence, the faculty. It is for the heart to suggest our problems and it is for the intelligence or awareness to solve them. If you have intelligence, you can solve any problem. If you want to know more and more ways of it, I to tell you, I have gained these things out of my own experience with life. My love affair with life, life is my spouse. I have lived moments of joy with life. Life is a living being for me, my spouse. And when I interacted with that, you remember life is, cannot speak, it is deaf and dumb. If your spouse is deaf and dumb, how would you interact with that? Learn to deal with a deaf and dumb life. It is meaningful. Life does not speak. It speaks in a totally different language that you cannot understand. In the same way, our spouse is speaking because they are of a totally a different frame of mind. They speak a different language. If you cannot understand, there is no point in being calling yourself intelligent, calling yourself to be spiritual. Spirituality means a totally a different kind of intelligence, a totally different kind of understanding is there in you and you intimate out of that. These are not mere words. These are the experiences gained in the company of my deaf and dumb spouse life. That spouse that life has given me many moments.